Good afternoon, this is Kuro. Got a tier 10 game in my summers. You can definitely see the new matchmaker at work. It's a full tier 10 match. Going over the threats to the ship. Midway, Des Moines, Stalingrad, Gearing, Double Shimikaze, Smolensk if uh, I get caught uh, basically near the guy. <clears throat> the map is Islands of Ice. I spawn north of Sea Cap and opening position basically going to come out and uh, mainly try to get spots for my team um, there is a tier 10 CV in the match so I do want to be cognizant of that uh, I do only have three smoke screens with this build um, now right off the bat one of the main issues I see with destroyers on this map on this cap is they head right in I'm gonna hug the island yeah okay it's true you can contest that cap for a very long time in the meantime if the enemy DD does his job in spot his team can work down your team much better your team can't disengage they're, they're constantly spotted now I don't like what my team's doing this Hindenburg he's pushing down this way the only thing that he he's really going to be able to shoot is down here or maybe across here uh, I would rather see him come here towards uh, the middle and be able to shoot this way and then into B cap so I do see the uh, CV is harassing my Haragumo so I am going to step on C cap, see what I can do to get it. And what I'm trying to do here, I see that I've got a an enemy DD, DD that's smoked up. I am, uh, rather than trying to throw some long range torpedoes out here on uh, one of these battleships, I'm going to go and uh, drop my torpedoes on this smoke. Maybe I get lucky and catch this guy with uh, torpedoes uh, the gearing and the Stalingrad are in a division together and that can be a really nasty one-two punch that my team's gonna have to deal with so right now I am uh, I am am well inside Stalingrad radar range he hasn't popped it yet and I did not foresee the Stalingrad rushing like that right into B cap this early in the game. This is going to spoil my torpedoes. Um, <clears throat> if the gearing was still there, um, obviously those torpedoes are spotted. They just barely missed the Stalingrad. And actually, if I had went with a, a wider set of torps, I might actually got a torpedo or two on that Stalingrad, but just uh, was trying to focus on getting a good tight spread through that smoke <clears throat> so right now I know that Stalingrad's radar is down and I know that this CV is really showing an interest in harassing this Haragumo I do pick up a torpid on the, on the Montana gonna slow down here and uh, dodge what I assume are Shima Torps by how far out they were spotted and I'm looking to line up a, a torpedo run on these battleships here and uh, <clears throat> one of my teammates is going to start pinging the map and that's gonna let me know that there's something there because all I saw was torpedoes uh, I mean, the, the range on those torpedoes, they could have been launched from back in here, across. Um, or they could be launched by a ship in here that's trying to push into Sea Cap. <coughs> Baby, you've already had enough treats. Are you all done? There we go. Let's go. There we go. Ba boom. <clears throat> so 
So I am going to start pushing over in this direction. There's the pings that uh, I was talking about earlier. <clears throat> And I'm just going to patrol through here, and you can see these are 20 kilometer Shema Torps. Um, you can see a plane this day with how they're spotted. <clears throat> Shema actually ran aground trying to get away from me. 8 out of 8 shell hits, that's a, a nice decent salvo. Now I see the dive bombers coming. I know that I'm, I'm surface spotted, and I don't want to give this Shema much opportunity to really... Um, trade on my HP simply because the Shima actually ha starts out with more HP than I do with a uh, if he's got survivability expert I didn't look stop to look to see if this one does <clears throat> but I basically was trying to make myself a hard to hit target here in the smoke uh, just kept moving through tried to use as much of that 30 seconds as I could to uh, to try to um, avoid any die bombers that kind of thing here I'm just I'm radared I'm just gonna kite out there's no need risking the HP I'm gonna throw some torps down here maybe see if I can catch one of these battleships pushing around those islands And I see the Stalingrad, I mean, he's he's really being aggressive for a Stalingrad right here. I'm trying to call target on him, but uh, the game isn't working with me. <clears throat> so I know the Stalingrad radar is down, and I'm looking... I'm looking for an opportunity to try to jump in on this guy. Just lost a Montana that was pushing very dangerously. <clears throat> and if you can see, my team on C, I'm abandoning him. Um, I'm going to pause it right here. I don't like what I see here. They're all on the border. That I mean, this guy can't really shoot at any anything at all. That is a tier 10 battleship. They can't shoot anything right now. Um, you know, it, it's you can't do those types of things. Uh, then we have a Kerr first that's yoloing into multiple enemy ships, uh, along with the Shimakaze out there. It's it's just not really a good idea to do, do those types of things. Not when we're we're this early in the game. We haven't even broke 500 points yet. It's we got a lot of game to play and you know we got guys that are just chucking their ships away as fast as they can and it's it's making me concerned that this is going to be a uh, a difficult game now i do get lucky and get a spot on the gearing that tells me that i don't have to deal with the uh, gearing screening for the stalingrad now what i want to do stalingrad's radar is down so i know my smolensk can try to farm him and that's what I'm counting on I'm counting on this guy farming him I'm counting on these battleships here to uh, punish this guy because Stalingrad has some really slow turrets and with his guns turned that way that's the hit I was looking for time to open these guns up <clears throat> now I'm not too worried about the gearing right here uh, he was sailing between this th this island. He pops up on the mini map. You see me look right there. I'm just going to turn, adjust my course, and keep this island between me and the gearing. I want a nice, you know, uh, nice gangbang on that Stalingrad without, you know, giving this guy a chance to get uh, shots in on me where I'm not shooting at him. CV's coming in to try to spoil my fun. Thankfully, he can't drop. So, again, just going to use smoke number two. And again, just like before, I'm not going to sit still in my smoke. I'm going to keep trying to uh, use all of the smoke 
Uh, I mean, I still have 12 seconds of deployment time. I'm just going to keep pulling this smoke out so this CV won't have any idea where I'm at. <clears throat> and I mean, it, this is just one of those CVs that uh, you bad, a DD obviously bad touched him at some time and he's really got a hard on for, for DDs and it, it can potentially win you games that way, it can also lose you games if you run into a DD that knows how to delay and, and tank CVs and just make their, their life difficult. The CV is not putting out any sort of meaningful damage over the course of the game and uh, your team will typically coast to a win. Uh, with at least an advantage that your CV can uh, can uh, potentially be more effective on his targets. Um, I see the CV's given up, so I'm going to start moving out of the cap. I think I'm going to get this cap here and that goddamn gearing step back on it. Uh, I did launch some preemptive torps. I saw that Montana accelerating. And uh, he, Montana is going to slam on the brakes, and those torpedoes are going to go by. <coughs> However, I am seeing a potential opportunity to bump this gearing out of the cab. It's a little risky. What I'm looking to do is I'm looking to come up here. We already know the gearing doesn't have torps right now. He threw torps on either side of the island. I'm pushing in here, and I want to try to get inside this gearing's concealment. I see this Montana sailing up. I know this gearing's just going to sit in this smoke and just try to contest a cap based on what he's doing. So, that's cool. I'm waiting for this Montana to push in behind this island. Unfortunately, the gearing smoke runs out. And we're off to the races. The gearing kites out, but... A nice little advantage here. Gonna actually pause it. Um, nice little advantage here. And part of the reason why I poked him like that is I've got a Z-52 that my best guesstimation is this guy's going to be pretty close to Z-52 hydro range. If he pokes, he's got a Montana in his face. Plus, he doesn't have smoke. Here comes the CV. So, he's got a lot of stuff going on right now. Now, I've got a Montana that I need to worry about. And how I'm going to do this, I'm just going to bow into this guy. Um, because we don't have pen, pen damage anymore... I'm just going to rely on the narrow profile of a destroyer and battleship dispersion to spread the shells out all over the place. And you can see that gearing just got whacked. <clears throat> CV coming in. Again, fun police. Just going to start laying this smoke because I really need to get this cap. We're, I mean, we're contesting two caps, but, you know, we are, we do have some points we've got to make up. And with us getting that gearing kill, we're 4v4. <clears throat> so the fun police, they flew off. They flew off. They didn't actually appear to recall their plane. So, and that's what I was, that's what I was thinking. The fun police is sitting right there waiting for me to come out of my smoke. <clears throat> He's going to end up going for the Z-52. And I'm just banking on the Z-52 getting this cap. It's going to be so close. He does end up flipping it. That's huge. Now I'm seeing an opportunity here. Um, destroyer players. Okay, you got a fat boat. He's got... He's coming up on a, a choke. He's got basically three options. He can he can stop or reverse. Okay, I guess that's two right there. Uh, or he can choose two, two routes. Uh, this battleship, if he turns south, he's pretty much completely out of the fight for a while. Um, 
he's not really going to be able to do significant damage to my Montana. Um, probably wouldn't be able to shoot my Midway if he gets spotted. And probably isn't going to be able to shoot the Z-52 or myself if we get spotted. So I'm banking on this fact that this guy is going to try to rendezvous with his team here. Um, I don't Honestly, I, I think that the play to, to be would be to kind of hang out in here. So when these guys get around to it, they push in and you've got a crossfire on BCAP. Um, but what I'm seeing is I think this guy's going to make the determination. He's going to try to run this gap here. And that's how I'm going to lay my torps. I'm watching him, watching him. You look, he's turning in. There's the turn in. So just going to lead him. And, I mean, turning in like that, if you've got somebody that knows how to torpedo, you better be changing speed or something because that's a, that's a death trap waiting to happen. Uh, I'm, I'm pretty sure at that point, at this range this battleship's gonna get hammered now I screw up I have AP loaded with a shima <clears throat> didn't notice it that volley but finally got switched over I do take a decent hit from that Montana but I'm undetected my torpedoes look good <clears throat> Okay, now what I'm doing coming here, I know that the smart play is the Shima probably just noticed his Montana just got slammed. Uh, it looks like this Montana tried to turn in last minute when I got spotted, and it probably opened himself up to even more torpedoes because of the angle that I launched. He probably went full broadside into the torpedoes. I couldn't really get a good view to, to see what kind of angle, but I know five torpedoes that's hurting now what I'm looking to do by by but button hooking up here okay the shimmer smoked up I see the enemy CV he's going for um, my Z 52 I don't have smoke anyway um, so at this point I'm just you know playing keep away with the the enemy CV but I know that this uh, shimmer is gonna be coming through here I know he's got a Montana buddy that's backing him up and I want to try to keep this rock between me and the Montana. And I just want to have a nice one-on-one -on -one with this Shima. I know there's a big health disparity. <clears throat> now I'm going to slam on the brakes here. Try to get him to miss. There's his miss. Now that's, that's critical. You get... Destroyers that have a, a long reload, they really have to rely on every volley hitting to, to turn these fights. Um, I think I do get a little bit of help from uh, my Montana here shooting at him. Um, but at this point, we've almost equalized this trade. And yes, he's not running survivability expert, so I did start out with an HP advantage on him. All um, So is what it is <clears throat> and here if I wasn't gun building I probably wouldn't have survived through this but I do pick up the Shima kill and that gives me this opportunity here to stronghold this choke point this Montana can't can't turn out if he turns out he stands the risk of getting blapped by my my Montana and it's it's the situation are you gonna push or are you going to just back off and if he backs off they most likely lose the game they've they're at a cap disadvantage they're down two ships um, we've got finally got the points advantage so here I'm using the shimmer smoke I know it's a uh, fresh smoke and I'm laying a nasty set of torps through here um, Two on the indicator, one short in case he slams on the brakes. And he's just going full bore for it. And that's a whole bunch of torpedoes right into him. Um, almost got detected by the CV there. I mean, it was, it was very close. <clears throat> 
but I figured that risking my ship for that kill was worth it um, just because we did have the ship advantage and I could kill that ship more efficiently than our Montana and our Montana uh, he's pretty much one of the only ships with HP left uh, aside from our I'm assuming our CV I can't see his HP can't see the enemy CV's HP either so here I'm making the the call I have no smoke, I have no speed boost, I have no tools to try to escape the enemy CV. I'm not going to risk capping C. A is not going to flip with our midway in it. It's unlikely that the, uh, the midway is going to be able to make it into B. So at this point I'm just, I'm going to run off. <clears throat> I don't want to risk uh, getting killed. Um, because this CV has been focusing destroyers heavily. Um, I mean, theoretically, he could. If our midway was low, this guy could potentially solo warrior us. It's I've seen it happen before. So I'm content with letting points run out. We win in two minutes 34 seconds. My Z52 is gonna step on the cap. Uh, he doesn't have smoke either, but at least he's got a little bit of HP. Um, but I mean that could be gone in one good pass with rocket planes. So definitely a risk here. I'm um, I'm taking this stance where I'm at right here. That if I absolutely need to get on C, I can. But it's unlikely that the CV is going to fly this far up to see. Hey, is any anything up there? Um, and at this point, um we win the game I believe my CV had actually worked down the enemy CV and uh, we were able to win the game hundred fifty nine thousand damage 13 torpedo hits two kills um, pretty solid game just barely missed top of the XP um, definitely wanted to throw some thank yous out to uh, uh, the couple guys that uh, they were making good decisions um, I mean this Haragumo for as much as he got focused with the uh, the CV to still break 2k base XP that's pretty damn solid um, so it's a summers mostly torpedo damage i do prefer the gun build because um i i do have questions whether um without it if you can win uh, a gun battle against something like a shimikaze yeah. um, without costing you a significant amount of hp um, in this case i was able to to take that shima relatively cheaply uh, so it's not a, a full, you know, test of the of the gun build. I run gun build because it feels more comfortable to me. Um, and at the end of the day, the, you know, 30 seconds or so off torpedoes isn't the biggest deal in the world to me because I have three sets of torpedoes. I can stagger them or send them in a wave or, or however I want to do it. Uh, I would rather have something a little on the uh, on the gun side to help try to um, shove out enemy DDs and things like that try to to use that alpha get one or two good shots into them and then just smoke up disengage uh, and try to get that that initial HP superiority over uh, enemy destroyers uh, which with eight guns you can do it. I mean that that first volley on that Shema with eight penetrating hits that that's You know a sig can be a significant chunk of damage out of a, a destroyer So I know I've been looking at the economy this uh, game actually had a bunch of destroyer damage um, I am running the Zulu flag and you can see the uh, the camo basically added another 180,000 credits to it um, <clears throat> the the boat is dirt cheap to run 
only 27,000 credits. Um, this is this is pretty solid for this sort of game. So I'm starting to see that the economy it isn't really as bad as I was. Whoa! Excuse you. You don't need to climb on the shelves. You don't need to get up there. Uh, so the economy isn't as bad as I was thinking. Uh, I still think that consistency-wise, the Tier 9 are better at, uh, at printing credits, though. Um, so anyway, this is, um, this is my Summers game. This is me starting to catch my stride, get really used to the boat. And uh, I've been putting in big damage numbers with the boat. Uh, just really been having some horrible teams recently, and uh, it's just throw central all over the place. So, um, you know, just want to get this game in here and uh, let those that haven't made their decision take another look and, uh, and see at least what I'm doing with it. So I hope you guys are having a good night. If you have any questions or comments, leave them below, and I will talk to you later.